Hello students, today I am going to discuss on the systematic drawing and description of flat tools, particularly about the point. This is the point we have to draw and describe it systematically. Points are almost of the same size as the scrapers. It seldom exceeds 4 inches. They are the characteristic tool of middle paleolithic cultural phase. Points are made either on true level 1 flex or simple flex or flex having cortex on one face. The most important feature of a point is that a point should possess soft lateral sides and a thick mid -wrist. This thick mid wrist should thus the working teeth. It should be clearly understood by the student that point is a morphological typology and unless a deliberate plan of a point is demonstrated in the structure of the tool, it need not be identified as a point. According to the shape and nature of the workmanship, point can be divided into many types. They are simple point, tank point, bifacial point, mausterian points, pseudo levalua points, levalua points, limage, laurel leaf and willow leaf points. Now let us come to the procedures for drawing a given tool accurately. All the procedures for a systematic drawing of the lithic tool are similar to those the procedures mentioned while drawing the lower paleolithic heavy core and flag tools. They are number one orientation of the given tool. If a point is selected or supplied for drawing, the working edge should be placed passing upward. The same nature of orientation is applied in the other subtypes and varieties of points also. Like other heavy tools, the dorsal surface of this lighter flag tool is also drawn first. So the surface which possesses more number of flex curves is considered as a dorsal surface or phase 1 of the supplied or selected tool. The opposite surface is normally considered as bandral surface or phase 2. It should be drawn lastly. The profile view is drawn in between the illustrations of the dorsal and bandral surfaces. The drawing of the cross section of the given tool is placed just below the illustration of the dorsal view. Now let's come to the nature of presentation. The three dimensional supplied lithic flag tool is represented by two dimensional illustration. The boundary of the specimen is drawn by using a thick line. The arises are also represented by thick lines, whereas the shape, size, and nature of the flex curves, these three primary flex curves, one, two, and three, these primary flex curves are shallow, then the secondary flex curves, these have more deep flex curves than the primary one, so it should be represented by thick and more curved lines, whereas it should be represented by less curved lines or somewhat curved lines. Now let's come to the required instruments and needed materials. A point, a slight caliper, a long scale of about 30 cm, a sock stick, some model clay and a copper wire are to be supplied by the department for each student. Each student should bring a laboratory notebook, a pencil, to set square, a divider, a compass, and an eraser and a softener. Hello students, now let us draw this point or let's see which one is better. We have to choose the best representative one.
then let us draw this one for a systematic drawing let us take a notebook let us first measure it measures 10 centimeter Then let us draw a line forming its lower boundary or proximal end. Then let us draw another line forming the distal or upper boundary. This is the proximal end of the tool and this is the distal end. It, it forms the lower boundary and this line forms the upper boundary. Now let us draw a line along its axis. Another line across the x axis along its half length. It's also known as y axis. Before placing this tool properly, we should divide or bisect this tool into two halves using an imaginary line and one of the half thus dissected should be placed parallel to this plane of this table. For placing this properly we should examine the height of these four points of two from the x axis and two from the y axis. We should have to measure Then we fill up the gap by using this plastician or model clay. Now we have got similar heights. Then we suppose that the specimen is placed properly. Then we should try to transfer it to the drawing sheet. While transferring so, one hand should hold the set square and the place affixing to the already drawn line and another hand should hold the specimen along with the model clay. These are the prominent elevated areas known as arises or ridges. These are the rises or ridges and these are the flex curves. Then we should roll the ridges. We have to mark these end or starting points while drawing the outline of the two. Now let us remove this specimen and place it properly here without changing its position. Then let us join the dots. See here we have got this main point. Here we have got this point here. And another one is this one. So suppose it goes in this way. It is a starting point. It shows here. And if it is a starting point, it should be the end point. It shows here. Let us measure the distance from here up to this point. Five point I centimeter. Five point eight from here. And another line goes in this way. Now we have got these three primary flex curves. 
and let us measure these two secondary flex curves should be measured first point to be the desired point to be find out is this one first we should measure from here up to this point should join this one and this should join this one dear students now we have completed the outline drawing of the dorsal profile and ventral now let us start about the shading of these illustrations the secondary working is represented by three lines A small area of step flagging or resolve or control flagging, it should be represented by straight vertical lines. And this part is the step flagging area. Now let us note down the measurements. We have drawn and everything accurately. Then let's describe this tool systematically. This is the illustration of the dorsal surface of the specimen. And this is the profile view and this is the ventral view of the specimen. And lastly, this is the cross section of the specimen. And these are the measurements. We have taken we have already measured the specimen while drawing. The maximum length along its axis is 9.8 cm and maximum breadth along its half length is 7.2 cm and maximum thickness along its half length is also 2.4 cm. This is written in this way. It should be mentioned clearly because one can easily understand by examining this number where from this tool or this implement is collected or even it is presently housed or exhibited. Then let's come to the raw material. The raw material used for shaping this tool is quartzite. The next point is about the state of preservation. The given specimen is patinated and rolled because most of the ridges have become smooth due to rolling and the color of the quartzite is also changing so it can be identified as rolled and patinated. We come to the measurements. We have already measured the specimen while drawing. The maximum length along its axis is 9.8 cm and maximum breadth along its half length is 7.2 cm 
and maximum thickness along its half length is also 2.4 cm. Now let's come to the general description of this tube. The given specimen is a flat tube. It is evident from this bulb of percussion and striking platform. It is somewhat triangular in shape. It is also a thin specimen. Now let's come to the dorsal view. The dorsal surface is represented by three main flex curves. These three main flex curves have shallow flex curves, so it can be identified as primary flex curves. In addition to these three large primary flex curves, there are a number of secondary flex curves towards the periphery and lateral side and also the base of the specimen. Now let's come to the profile view. The line of profile is continuous and somewhat wavy. It can be identified as sinus. And the profile view is thin. Now let's come to the ventral view. The ventral surface is represented by one primary flex curve. And there is also a sign of striking platform and also a prominent bulb of percussion. There are many secondary or retouching towards the lateral side and also towards the working tip of the specimen. Now let's come to the probable manufacturing technique. From the shape, size and nature of the flex curves present on the specimen. These specimen might have been prepared by using level 1 technique. Now let's come to the probable tool type. From the shape, size and nature of the Manufacturing technique, the given specimen may be identified as point type of flag. Now let's come to the probable cultural period and chronology. Culturally, this given specimen belongs to Middle Paleolithic and chronologically belongs to Pleistocene. Now let's come to the probable function and economy. These given specimen might have been used as the head of these spears and also arrowheads and also as the tips of darts and javelin. It belongs to hunting and gathering economy. Now I would like to conclude with the following few words. Today we have discussed on the flag tools, particularly on the type group point and its various types and variety. Then we have drawn accurately following the right procedures. By examining the nature of the flag curves, we can trace the probable tool making technique, tool type, cultural period, chronology, and function and economy as well. Thank you all for present hearing.